It's five o'clock in the morning. I've been up for two, I don't know, maybe three days. I'm not quite sure. Drunk? Oh yeah. High on Wolf Spain. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Absinthe, Scotch, and Madness. Together, we'll scale the heights and soar to the bottomless pit. <laughs> Bathe in clouds of gloom and eye-searing sun. Eye-searing sun. Run wild through fields of glory. Hear darkness scream. Watch light dissolve as we sail to hell and heaven to bring forth the new. Do not be afraid. For I am with you till the end and beyond. beyond. <laughs> Seven points of darkness, shining heaven's rise across the ocean flower. What once was hidden now is raised. Wrapped in the holy mist of time, my blood has yours and yours is mine. In several I've known you, it always ends the same. In pieces on the ground, between the ashes and the flames. Just from the party, fire and wild Just from the party, suns and doubters take holy sight. Grand respite, the blade of justice guides my heart. From the burning. Oh, Fusing it all, bringing it all back home to that first question from when it all began to now, it's come full circle where the, the, the bones of the mountain have, have, have reached the opera and then some and they've embraced and, and the gods made love and, and uh, here we are and uh, we'll play.
blazing into the uh, 22nd century. Uh, I know I'm 100 years ahead, but uh, that's where we're going with this thing, and uh, we hope everyone can join us. So, uh, cheers to all out there in television land, by the gods and goddesses. versions of things like Kingdom of the Fearless or the Blacklight Bacchanalia and uh, I guess well, I call them not exactly acoustic versions and they're very very heavy even though they're stripped down in that context and in some ways they're even heavier because of the rawness and, and the directness that's there there's no uh, obscuring veil of sonic uh, insanity it's just right there so uh, if you're into that sort of thing I think people perhaps are ready for something like that now because there's been years and years of these very produced records. This is not that. This is a very uh, live, it was actually recorded live, uh, with some little bit of things added later on, but the vocal is, is totally live from, from, from the gate, and I didn't go back in and, and uh, re-record things and, and uh, talk things up. So I think uh, that will be a very special record. I hope people take that, because that's what we're going to be taking to the stage within the months and weeks to come. Steel albums, the music is built upon a fusion of ideologies. I have one part of what I call the bones of the mountain sound and philosophy. The primal, barbaric, raw, primitive side. This comes partially from the blues and partially from my pagan interests and such, and all the heaviness and all the sadness that goes with all of that. And on the other side, I have the more classical aspect. Classical as in the structure of ancient architecture, poetry, visual art, theater, 19th century music, Chopin, Verdi, Debussy, the sensual side, or the romantic, if you will. Therefore, the outcome, barbaric romantic. What connects the two are the notes, the passion, the emotions, and the quest for capturing life in all its profound depth and the flair for improvisation that both camps or styles contain. Oh, fuck you! I will look back! There are absolutely no limits! And there is no fear! The Gothic Voodoo Anthems album, Origins. The origins for this type of album go back to the earliest days of my composing at the piano. All those very heavy songs like Noble Savage, The Angel of Light, I Will Come For You, Amalaith, A Symphony of Steel, Invictus, Kingdom of the Fearless, Sword of the Gods, or whatever, all started life with just the piano and the vocal. I knew that if a song worked that way, then it actually was a proper song, and it could stand on its own with or without any type of instrumentation or musical arrangement. Wow. Oh. Do you wow? Do you wow? Who is this god? you anyway, anyway, for my beauty out of grief. I'll find you. 
At some point early on, Edward and I began exploring the catalog, going through, playing songs with just guitar and vocal, or just piano, guitar, and vocal. And we found that we really enjoyed playing and hearing the songs that way. The harmonic vocabulary, the chord progressions come through more clearly, more directly this way. When you have chord progressions that are interesting, harmonically rich, and are able to drive a song's momentum forward, we found that is all we really needed. like that so much that we began doing some concerts in that style as well. enjoyed the intimacy and the challenge which that particular situation provides. When performing raw and stripped down like that, there really isn't anything to hide behind. Oh, 
Time again, we had our thoughts on this subject confirmed. If the songs work that way, they're gonna work anyway. So uh, that's kind of been one of the strengths of this deal. And we've gone out on the road, and, uh, we've, and Josh has come with us as well, and we've done these, these kind of, I wouldn't call them unplugged, I call them not exactly acoustic performances. I mean, <laughs> we're plugged in, but he's playing acoustic guitar, he's playing acoustic guitar but there's still this massive PA, and we're using the, uh, the tools of the trade to uh, uh, reach the back row. And it's, uh, it's a different spin, yeah. well, but it's, it's loud. But it's, it's loud it as shit. Loud. Yeah, it's <laughs> the loud as shit. Yeah, it's, it's very loud. It, it, it's, oh yeah, by no means can you say, you know, a oh, nice little quiet acoustic moment. It's, it's not. Don't knock your fucking head off. Omaha! Living place! Whenever we began recording a new album, we always sketched everything out first with just piano and vocal, or piano, guitar and vocal. And when listening back to the songs in that incarnation, to our ears they already sounded fully realized, complete. And again, this carried over into performing live. I remember one very memorable concert. We were scheduled to perform with the full band at an open air festival in Granada. Edward, Josh, and I were already in Europe, so we flew into Granada from, I believe, Germany, and our drummer at the time was scheduled to fly in from the States. Somehow, somewhere, somewhere, he got the dates mixed up and never made it to arrive in time for the concert. The promoter was worried. He said, what do we do? What do we do? Should we cancel? I said, no, of course not. Let's do it. And I thought, well, we'll do what we do in our acoustic incarnation. Only this time, we'll do it with bass, as Josh was there, and with the electric guitar, rather than the acoustic guitar. And that is just what we did. No drums, my vocals and keyboards, and Josh's bass. And it was a very successful performance. Don't get me wrong, I love the full band experience. Loud, buzzing guitars, pounding drums and thunderous bass, but it isn't always necessary. There is room for diversity, variety, something different now and then, another way. It makes a nice change, so when you do come back for a song with full guns blazing, it sounds even heavier. Due to the shift in dynamics, that allowance of light and shade. If you're pounding away all the time, you can get numb and the heaviness gets blunted. From those origins, things progressed and evolved to where we now have an album like Gothic Voodoo Anthems. Moving onward, to be brief, because of the fact that I am a total maniac and I like to work non-stop, due to their own personal lives, schedules, obligations and such, all the guys in Virgin Steel are not always available. So because of that, I had begun jamming with a piano playing friend of mine named Lynn Marie Delmato. Maybe a short backstory is in order. I believe that I explained some of this in our Seven Devils Moonshine box set movie, the In the Devil's Garden, the psychodrama thing we put out, but, all right, here we go again. Lynn and I had met while working with another project called Carnival, Carnival of Souls. Souls. 
Carnival of Souls consisted of myself, Edward Persino, Josh Block, Lynn, and the drummer who played on the Exorcist Nightmare Theater album, Jeff Fontaine, also known as Mark Edwards. It was a project really just for fun, a way to keep active, and the chance, chance to do something a bit different. different. With Carnival of Souls, we performed lots of covers, things by Led Zeppelin. Tracks by Virgin Steel. Virgin Steel. Of course, tracks by Virgin Steel and Exorcist. <laughs> Well, during some downtime from work with Virgin Steel and Carnival of Souls, while the other gents were busy elsewhere, Lynn and I began jamming. Just the two of us, piano and vocal. We quickly developed an interesting chemistry and a three hour plus set list of songs we could perform. So we did. Oh, 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 man. Is not our fault. So we have unity within and without. We did several gigs on Long Island. Some were publicly announced and some were private performances. performances. One was a very spontaneous impromptu gig in Ohika Castle. Ohika is where we filmed a large part of the videos for the Life Among the Ruins album. There is a 30 minute mini movie called The Tale of the Snakeskin Voodoo Man. And of those clips, you can see the castle, most notably in the song Never Believed in Goodbye, where we performed right in the vestibule. Anyway, we thought, well, since we have all this material, why don't we document this particular moment in time? We got the gear together and performing live, we recorded the entire set over a two-day period, and, and then I listened back, back and picked what I thought captured the best moments of it all. I call those sessions the not exactly acoustic sessions, as they are not acoustic. We did everything live and loud and raw.
performing through a big PA system. Thus, the Gothic Voodoo Anthem album began. And yes, we intentionally left all the feedback, all the noises, all the various mistakes and what have you in there. Oh, and incidentally, all the video clips from that album that we were putting out now all have that same live setting backdrop because we did all the filming for all those songs all on the same day, one after the other, in one go. They should all be conceived, viewed, and understood really as one full-length concert performance, for that is what it is. For that is what it is. As if there wasn't enough material already, after picking the tracks that we did together, I still had some bees in my bonnet, so I went back in by myself and recorded a few more additional songs to include, which found me playing everything and singing the course. Those tracks I did alone specifically for the Gothic Voodoo Anthems album are I Will Come For You, Kingdom of the Fearless, Zeus Ascendant, and By the Hammer of Zeus. I also did a few more of these stripped down orchestral type tracks that appear elsewhere in the box set. The Evil in Her Eyes, Dust from the Burning, and Amaranth plus a few more. But we couldn't fit everything in there, so the additional yeah. tracks that I did will eventually appear as bonus material sometime. It's like it was when I wrote the songs just at the piano, which is playing the piano and the vocal. Orchestral seasonings. At first I thought I would leave the tracks we recorded with just the piano and vocal and whatever else we might have initially captured when we performed the set that day, rather like the performances I did with Edwin Josh that appear on the Invictus bonus disc, Fire Spirits. Then I thought, why not go back in and add a bit more orchestration? Orchestration. So I did. This lent another color and a different mood to the entire affair. However, a couple of tracks were left in that fully stripped down, totally raw state of just the piano and the vocal to showcase that side of what we do. Gothic Voodoo Anthems was the first disc in the chamber, so to speak, for the box set. It springboarded the whole thing. I think you will find that it is still over the top and bombastic like our other albums, only the songs are done in a stripped down, more orchestral manner. Approach is always honest and raw, with the voice being used as a human guitar, a weapon, or any other instrument that might come to mind. And the piano, keyboards, orchestral embellishments, and such, are used to shift the mood and the emotional weather. I developed this way of singing, kind of like a human guitar, that uh, Jimi Hendrix, what he was doing. Uh, as we started doing it, when I started doing more of this acoustic <laughs> stuff, it was just two of us, obviously he couldn't solo, there was no you know, other instrument. So I would go off on tangents vocally and we had these flights of fancy, sort of like uh, what they used to call the rave up section with the odd birds when Eric Clapton was in the band. It's that exploration, you know, a little, uh, heavy improv.
these flights of fancy also grew out of my composing. The music should always take you on some sort of a journey, bring you places you've never been to before, before bringing you back to where you started. Take the song somewhere else. It's got to go somewhere else. It's yeah. just then fantastic. You, then stuff. you come back to where you were, and, and uh, but you're different because you've been somewhere, you've learned something, you've had some growth, you got a bit more hair, you grew a beard, whatever, and now you're back in the trenches and you're firing on even more cylinders than you were before. That's the nature of the thing. In the, uh, in the old days of speaking to Jamal Hayes, who's speaking to Jamal Hayes a lot, and let's, let's bring in Jeff Beck and the rest of them, in the Yardbirds, they would have what they called on stage the raver, where the guys would go, they would go hardwire and solo and do extended and make jam and do this improvisational area. I try to approach the music is to have that raver section. So the song goes elsewhere, completely into unexpected terrain, and then you come back and go, oh, yeah, fuck, I get it, yeah, I, we've been around the world, you know, we, 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 like, you're like a sailor, you come back and you're like, we're back into the port of call, all right. Some people have asked me, well, you play keyboards, why work with another pianist? The answer is, well, I like collaborating with other people, whatever the instrument is. And there was and is always room enough for me to do my thing on the piano, on keyboards, or any other orchestral choices I used on the album. So in short, it was no problem whatsoever. It was a beautiful experience. mention the song Bone, Bone Dust, Dust, which we recently released a video clip for. Bone Dust was also recorded during those gothic voodoo anthem sessions, but I put it on the Ghost Harvest Vintage One album because it seemed to flow nicely between the songs Psychic Slaughter and Hearts on Fire, and because I wanted to showcase the inherent heaviness and dynamics that track contains even in this stripped down version without the onslaught of pounding drums and distorted guitars. The violence still remains. On the south side. Alright, let's go. I will come for you, orchestral version. Lightning strikes and gods collide under tortured skies from a land with no sun. I will come for you. This is an orchestral take on a virgin steel anthem from the album The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, Part 1. This is the song that started that saga off with a bang. And it starts off our Goth Brew Anthem's not exactly acoustic live in the studio sessions album here in full-on barbaric romantic fashion. In this song, metal and more classical elements converge to create an atmosphere of dramatic retribution, pathos, mystery, eternal longing, and a love that never dies. over-the-top over take of the song, song segues directly into Queen of the Dead orchestral version. Oh, the version presented here, like I Will Come For You, is violent and filled with over-the-top orchestral percussion accents, psychotic cellos, and storming pianos. It is a raw and passionate take on a track that was already quite raw and passionate to begin with. This version here is taken one step higher than the one found on the Nocturnes album and captures all the elements of the original version combined with a unique twist showcasing the pure bones of the song in all its graveyard glory. The 
is taboo! Orchestral version. Like everything else on this album, it was performed live and recklessly through a super loud PA system. Aggressive and tender, melancholy and defiant, with throw caution to the wind bravado. This version summons the spirits of the original version, but incorporates a violent etherealness which takes it to another realm, maybe revealing more of the song's innate progressive nature. The lyrics conjure real-life events, as well as the ancient myth concerning Orpheus and Eurydice, where Orpheus traveled down to the underworld bring back his deceased wife. His performance softens the hearts of Hades and Persephone, who set Eurydice free on the one condition that Orpheus will not look back during their ascent back into the upper world. The story states that Orpheus did look back just upon reaching the end of their journey because he could not hear his wife's footsteps following behind him, and in doing so, he lost her forever. This song also recalls the idea of the biblical Lot and his wife's unfortunate experience. And like many of my songs, the Orpheus taboo is about rebellion and defiance to so-called authority, and a middle finger to anything or anyone who tries to control another human being, animal, or spirit. One forbidden door, one forbidden shore, one path to take. To lift the veil and taste the fruit, to touch the bark while awake. Fuck you! I will look back. The age of the hero is mine! Do not attempt to impose any limits on what I can do or will do. Kingdom of the Fearless! The destruction of Try! Orchestral version. Bombs away! Look to the west! Behold your graves! This version retains the anger, violence, and savagery of the original, but also has a kind of ghostly atmosphere due to the instrumentation and the stripped-down nature of the various sections. Without having buzzing guitars or drums to drive the track, the harmonic progression alone is what gives it its forward momentum, along with the violence of the vocal. A few orchestral drum hits and accents provide the necessary feeling of plunder and doom. As you know by now, all of my songs are written on the piano, so of course, this was no exception. By composing this way, I made sure that all the intrinsic, the innate metal, or heaviness, etc., is built into the song from the ground up. In the simplest, most raw state of just piano and vocal, the track will work as a complete song, without all the cosmetics of production. I do enjoy the cosmetics and what they bring to the table but I find that it is nice to strip them away to see how a song is actually built. This track is a very good example of that. What is essentially driving the song is the song, the harmonic framework. And what is true of this song is also true of all the songs of Virgin Steel. I slay, I crush your time.
on the Gothic Voodoo Anthems album Absolutely Live, no click tracks, just straight up go for it performing, this album has a great feeling and a great sense of freedom. We were able to push and pull the tempo using that classical music idea of rubato and inject a great deal of light and shade, dynamics into the performances, which was very, very liberating. The Black Light Bacchanalia, what is it about? Several things meet. 1692 Salem witch trials, the great plague of the 1300s in Europe, the Inquisition, and ultimately what it's mainly about is the death, destruction, the eradication of the female principle in divinity. Due to tribal invasions and the rise of the Father God principle, and then later due to the rise of organized religion, it speaks to the destruction and, and death of paganism, the insanity of our world today, and the midnight hour deal with the devil at the crossroads. All these thoughts converge and intertwine. For me, there is a kind of beautiful savagery, a bombastic rage and anger combined with a deep sense of melancholy. In short, the Black Light Bacchanalia, an unholy requiem for the age that is to come. the culmination, the conclusion of the Visions of Eden, the Lilith Opera Saga. The album also expanded upon the Visions ideas and incorporated other elements that relate to Lilith Saga. For example, the rape and death of Hypatia, Joan of Arc, Isabel, the destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria, plus numerous other crimes against knowledge, against ideas, beliefs, against women, and so on. The version presented here showcases the marriage of our dark gothic voodoo bluesy vibe welded or married to our more barbaric romantic metal style, resulting in a performance that reveals a different side of the song than what we presented on the album of the same name. Again, the song was recorded live and the clip accurately reflects the mood of the day we performed it and the subject matter quite clearly. 
of that event to this day. Zeus Ascendant. This hybrid ancient Greek, ancient Sumerian style piece is never performed exactly the same way twice. Live, we use it as a launching pad for improvisation. It is an invocation to the subterranean, be it within or without. And it leads directly into by the hammer of Zeus and the wrecking ball of power. The orchestral version, of course. The version presented here continues with the ancient Greek, Sumerian, Nordic feel and is both aggressive and rather ethereal at the same time. With driving strings, persistent groove and over-the-top performances all around. The upheavals of what occurred long ago when the coming of a father god principle supplanted the mother goddess worshipping societies and the chaos that resulted and is still unraveling today is the essential subject of this track. And what we capture here reflects that doomed experience. experience. This one is sung from the perspective of direct conflict between the god and goddess, and it reveals the lust of the god for the goddess and both his swagger as well as his doubt and internal turmoil. As Betty Davis, the great actress, once said, Heavy metal is not for sissies. <laughs> the Gothic Voodoo Suite, featuring the tracks Romanian Funk Dance Number no. 3, The Delirium Excerpt, and Snakeskin Voodoo Man, the orchestral version. This is where the album starts to veer into the deep south Gothic Voodoo Blues terrain. The Romanian Folk Dance sets up a serious mood, conjuring the ancient pagan and pre-pagan rituals of harvest, life, growth, death and rebirth. The mystery of who, what and where we are. This leads into the delirium excerpt. The harmonic progression of the chorus of that song, which in its entirety is found on the Nocturnes of Hellfire and Damnation album, is what I am vocally riffing over. This too is a type of invocation but this time to all things of a more seductive and sensual nature. In our not exactly acoustic live set, this suite is often our set opener. It gets the whole thing going. Segwaying into Snakeskin Voodoo Man, which presented here, is very different than the versions that I have done acoustically with Edward or the full band, both of which can be found on the Life Among the Ruins album. This version is more gothic, more voodoo-esque. It seems like it could be an outtake from Led Zeppelin's first album, which to my ears anyway. Sound for us at Mulcahy's. <laughs> <laughs> what she is referring to is the Carnival of Souls, and that's actually where uh, we first met through a gentleman named Jeff Fontaine, also known as Mark Edwards in his other life. Most of you have met him, people know him as Jeff Fontaine from the Exorcist Records. I was in the middle of writing what became the Visions of Eden record at that time, because I remember pulling up to the studio listening to a cassette, my, uh, my piano playing version of the title track, Visions of Eden, and trying to sort out all those riffs and stuff like that, because it was a long drive from my house to the studio. I was like working out the arrangement of, of the track. Yeah, and I walked in and uh, you were setting up the keyboard. And, yes. Uh, but anyway, um, moving right along. Over the years, the, the Carnival Souls thing kind of coalesced. Out of that, kind of building on that gothic blues framework, you'll see, hear a lot of uh, the Burden Steel stuff in this live set, like Black Light Bacchanalia, 
uh, by the hand of Zeus, do off his taboo, queen of the dead, bone dust, all kind of filtered through this like um, demonic, pyromantic pagan hymns and gothic voodoo anthems, if, if you will, what we're, we're doing right now. Just kind of stripping it down, getting away from the fact that you have to have drums and distortion. Distortion. All right! Let it roar! Bow the hammer of Zeus in the ripping ball of fire! Bow the hammer of Zeus in the ripping ball of fire! Bow the hammer of Zeus in the ripping ball of fire! That is my heart! It's made of our own! Black is my soul! With fear comes in madness! I bring the sun from out of our own! Sumerian, ancient Babylon, the ancient Greek and Egyptian all converge in this tale of spellbinding love and lust, all set in a desert-like atmosphere. After the first solo, the voice takes the second solo, acting as the violent wind racing across the landscape. As regards all the covers we have ever done, either in the past or recorded here now on the Seven Devils Moonshine box set, the idea was always to rewrite, rearrange, reimagine, recreate, reinvent the songs. Yes, often adding new material to them, to put them in the crucible, to recast them as Virgin Steel songs, to bring something new to the table. Create some kind of an emotional framework that's going to change the world in some 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 interesting way. Let people know that you're only on this earth, you're only immortal for a limited time. There is a shelf life. So you have to uh, get your shit together and do it now. The Fire and Ice Medley, Scene 1, Bone China. This is a beautiful song written by Mother Love Bone and recast, reimagined here as a virgin steel song with a violent and savage mood intertwining with a more romantic sensibility. Thus, yes, a barbaric romantic moment full of tenderness, aggression, longing, and, and a sense, sense of melancholia. melancholia. This segues into scene two, no quarter. Here we went for darkness, cold, snow, wind, and as much ice as we could muster between the two of us. Yes, it is stripped down, but yes, it is still firmly in the metal camp with thudding orchestral drums, voices, weapon type vocals, and all sorts of hypnotic keyboards and winds of fire and winds of ice. Scene three, Bone China reprise. After the rave up, the madness, we return to the original romantic yet savage melancholia of Bone China. To conclude our journey through lands of savage beauty, darkness and light, clouds of gloom and mountains of fire and ice. The Passion in the French Quarter Medley, featuring song A, Chloe Dancer, and song B, Gentle Groove. Here we present two more Mother Love Bone tracks recast in the VS mood or mode. The first, Chloe Dancer, is quite short, but full of passion, longing, and a kind of beautiful sadness. Set in perhaps a New Orleans voodoo bedroom, 
brothel or what have you. Well, that's how I see it and feel it anyway. Two troubled people, two, two troubled, troubled souls, souls who share something intimate, untouchable, scars and all. It spills over into gentle groove. This again has that romantic, violent streak. A deep, strong passion that borders on barely restrained fury. These two songs invoke memories of lovers both past and present. You, the listener, the, listener, the viewer, are inside the dwelling where strange things may happen. What is happening? You decide. Darkness, darkness, our version here has a sweat-drenched summer jasmine night feeling. I think one can easily visualize the loneliness and the loss. By this point in the album, we are neck deep in the swamp, firmly in gothic voodoo blues territory, so it is only fitting now to explore Death Letter Blues, this song written by Sun House and rewritten, reimagined by us, is actually the only recorded version. Like everything else on this album, it was performed live, and this one and only take captured everything we wanted for the song, so we didn't even attempt to record another. The story is a sad one, of love and loss and death once again, and it can be interpreted numerous ways. The performance contains swagger and sway, playfulness and an abundance of sensuality, sexual energy, mojo, life. With the vocal taking on the idea of the human guitar, especially around the 3 minute and 8 second mark, right out to the end. Goodbye, child. Gonna meet you just for today. Our take has that late night barroom feel where I am communicating directly to a spirit soaked devil angel. Again, raw and live without a net, we left the mistakes and the conversation in. I think it helps put the listener right there in the room with us, which is exactly what we wanted for this Gothic Voodoo Anthems album. I wanted that performing on the front porch sort of vibe. This song and the entire album offers a rare invitation to a very particular part of our world. Here we open the door, let you in, show you various sides of our nature, and we pay for all the drinks. And thus, this performance concludes the album. Within this album, you will find metal, romanticism, beauty, tenderness, and also, as I said earlier, an incredible violence, a focused rage, that I believe makes for a very dramatic musical experience. For us, the album provides a very intimate inside look into the songs and what makes them tick, and it presents an unvarnished, passionate statement. It stands as a testament to our way of life and, and to, to our, our commitment, commitment to the immortal spirit of music. We never play it safe in Verdant Steel. We could have made life simpler for ourselves, much simpler for ourselves, scaled down each project, but then we wouldn't be who or what we are. We are driven by this great love and lust for music. I know that for me, it is absolutely all-encompassing. I have far-ranging epic goals, and I have always been aware that life is capricious, and everything can change in the blink of an eye. You're here today, and sometimes gone later today, kissed and anointed in the morning, cursed, cursed and killed in the evening. So, I always push myself and all the other members of the group to the limit and beyond. We're givers, we give it all, always. Like it's the last notes we'll ever play.
give, and then we give some more. It's that desire to communicate an idea, an emotion, what have you, to another human being. To say, look, check this out. Try to see it from this angle. Then, let's have a wine over it. We have achieved so much, but there is still so much more I want to do creatively. So much music, so little time. I learned very early on about the power, the magic, and the mystery of music, love, love sex, and, and death. death. And I have never lost my interest, my passion, for documenting every breath. circle. It's five o'clock in the morning once again. Different day, different week, but yes, still dead drunk in the morning. Still high on Wolf Spain. Our gothic voodoo journey concludes for now, but this road goes ever on and on. New journeys, new musical new paths, musical await, paths await, await, and we shall walk and ride together again quite soon. I hope you enjoyed spending time with us. We've certainly enjoyed your company. And as promised, I shall be with you till the end and beyond. Fare thee well, friend. We will meet again.